What's going on? It's your man Jerome Smith, also known as JS, aka the best. And on this episode of Hustling Different, man, I got a very special guest. I normally say that every time, but this guy right here, woo, one of the most incredible MCs, one of the most incredible artists I've known. We've, of course, we've done a couple songs, but just his work alone, you know, it speaks volumes. You might have seen him with RE, aka Red Essence. The what band? Man, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the show. My man, the animal, Killer Cow. How you doing, man? Man, I'm happy to be here, Jay. That's good to see you, brother. Man, it's been a minute, man. How you been holding up, you know, since this whole COVID and quarantine situation, man? How you been holding up? Man, it's funny because, um, you know, with the go-go thing, um, it's been it's been at a dead stop, man. We can't play. Yeah. You know, we can do a couple live streams, but you know, go go the whole experience is the live thing. So of course, of course. Being, being outside of that is is really rough. But the actual positive out of it, and it just gave me more chance to do my rap stuff. You mm -hmm. know, and um, you know, all that all that grinding for years and double working with the go go and the rap. Yeah. I get a chance to pay more attention to the rap right now. So Yeah, yeah. It kinda worked on. out for, it kinda worked out for you. Cause it you know, did, of course actually. that go go, you know, it's always gonna be there, but sometimes right. you can get sidetracked and you know, forget yep. what you really want to do sometimes. So I Absolutely. I get it. I get it. But what I wanna do before we, you know, start talking about, you know, everything that's going on right now in the future, I wanna go back. You know, I wanna go back okay. to your origin story. So like where did you come from? Where did you grow up at? What was it like in the household, in the environment? Just break everything down for me. Definitely. Well, I'm what you call an original DMV baby. Um, my mother lived uptown in Washington, D.C. <clears throat> my dad had ties in Virginia, Alexandria, and I stayed with my grandmother out in Maryland and Mitchellville. <clears throat> so I stayed between those three places through my whole childhood. And, uh, you know, just, just as far as music, um, being from this area, you know, we got the go go. That's heavy and uh, growing up in the in the nine in the eight, late eighties and nineties, that's what you you're getting heavy go go. Um, you're getting heavy ice cube, heavy scarface influences, you know. So I'm I'm pretty much when you look at my whole uh skill set, I'm pretty much a uh, product of that. I'm a product of, of of growing up on go go and then when the go go turns off, everybody would go outside and play, I would go watch you on T V raps. So I would have that balance. It would be like that balance of go-go and rap my whole life. So that's how it all got started for me, man. I love that. Now, can you explain what go-go is? Because I know it's a lot of people that's not from the DMV area Definitely. that don't know what go-go is. And they don't even know what the DMV area is. So break down what is the DMV no area and what is go-go. No problem. When, when people use the term DMV, they're talking about D.C., Maryland, and Virginia. Um, even though it is three different places. We all have the same kind of culture, so that's how it all got lumped together. Some now, DC hold people, up, hold up. Before we before we go any further, would you include yeah. Baltimore in the DMV? See, I <laughs> I personally would because I have fam there, and I but they don't even really want to be included in, yeah. in that in that mixture. So it's really yeah. the go go culture, really. To be out, to be honest, the go go culture in, in the in the immediate metropolitan area yep. is really yep. the DMV. So when yeah. you see DC, Maryland, and Virginia. Shout out to Baltimore, you know. Of I got course, a lot it's of always fans, love. Yeah, yeah, it's always all love. love. It's, it's all just, love, it's, it's a little different though. You know, the culture is different. Lot, the culture is different. How they, how we move, and how we dress, and how we talk is different. Yeah, and it's no slight because I love nah, be more, nah, be nah, more. Nah. It's, it's love, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's love. love. It's love. So, um, yeah, but as far as go go, man, go go. Everybody, um, that's not familiar with go go, man. Back in the late seventies, uh, Godfather go go Chuck Brown started the genre. Um, basically, the the the, uh, <clears throat> the whole experience of GoGo is nonstop music. So it just keeps going and going and going. You play uh, usually bands play. They play a song. They stop. People clap, and that's 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 what you usually get at a live band performance. But with GoGo, it just keeps going and going and going. There is no intermission until you take a break after about an hour. So you get an hour of straight action. Take a little break, wind down a little bit, get a drink, get some air. And then you right back into it for another hour, and we send you on home. So that's what that's our that's our homegrown music here, man. That's our culture. Um, it's got a lot of news lately because uh, they're trying to pass some legislature and all that. Um, all that stuff is great for the culture, and uh, that's what we do here, man. Go go is heavy here. Yeah, there's nothing like that live experience. Like I could uh, play it for you, but you got to actually uh, go and experience it. It's it's different. Woo. It's way it's way, way different. different. It's way <laughs> yeah. Different. Now, what was you like in high school, man? Was you like loud? Was you laid back? Was you the type that just battle rap everybody? Not like what? Uh, what? 
What was you like in high school? Man, the funny part is um, I was very quiet in high school. I played basketball. Um, I played basketball. I had a scholarship to Norfolk State. Um, but actually went to Hampton because the coach got uh, – there was some issues with the coach. So I ended up going to Hampton, and um, that's when I really started my band at Hampton because it was so many – in that Hampton area, you got Tidewater, you got Virginia Beach, you got Williamsburg. Everybody is, all the D.C. people needed something to do. So we started a band down in my school. Um, we threw parties, six, seven hundred students coming to the parties. We charged like five dollars. It got so big that some of the bigger bands would come down during the week and join us like Junkyard, Backyard, Northeast Groovers. And they were just amazed at how. We put like six or seven hundred kids and shuttle buses from ODU and Norfolk State and Hampton and Richmond and all that to make it happen. So um, that's basically I was just a quiet kid, man. I was really into music. Like I said, I really played 50 50. Like I really would be 50 percent go go most of the time. As soon as I turned the go go off, it was straight to the rap, straight to the ice cube, straight to 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 the biggie to the tupac you know that that was my whole thing so I, I had a good i had a good dosage of both genres that really you know drove my childhood coming up yeah now i know especially you know back in the day like being from dc and rapping it wasn't necessarily the coolest thing to do you know what i'm saying you'd be called Definitely a band not. and all types of wild stuff but right you, right you actually rapped in go-go band so like how did you how did how did that happen well um I had my band down at school and I was actually the lead talker. So people that don't know what a lead talker is, the lead talker is the person that calls the song and kind of talks to the crowd for the, for the, uh, the call and response. So I was that guy at my, at my um, school because I was, I was popular and I knew everybody. So that position worked for me. But as the band started coming down to my school and they still said, well, you're going to be coming home soon. You got this big crowd. You know, what are you going to do when you come home? Are you looking to keep the band? Do you want to join a bigger band? What do you want to do? So uh, I came home, and as uh, soon as I got home, man, my band started playing, packed house, band started reaching out, got with the what band, and, uh, you know, from there, it's just been up and up and up from there. Nice. Now, how did you end up with Red Essence? Now, so to piggyback on the last question, I moved from the one position to the rapper position because I felt like... Um, you know, the rappers in Go-Go, no disrespect to any rappers, but every position evolves. So I felt like the rapper position wasn't evolving in Go-Go. I felt like they were doing a lot of cover talk, a lot of the cover raps. They were saying a lot of the raps that what they would hear on the radio, which is cool. I mean, it's a it's a live setting. You have some wedding bands, cover bands. That they, that's how they make a living, you know. But just me personally, I felt like the genre needed, a, you know, a boost. And, mm -hmm. and we have people that, 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 that do that, like Los from Backyard. Yeah. He was one of the trendsetters that kind of got away from the cover songs yeah. and started implementing his own raps. Yep. And um, I thought that was just, like, amazing for the culture that he would implement his own raps over the cover songs. Mm -hmm. And it kind of and it kind of made the song different. It changed the whole song and turned it into something else, even though we were using the music. The yep. lyrics were original, and the crowd could feel that. Yep. So um, as a rapper, I took that personal and I, I wanted that to be my whole thing so uh playing with the web band at the rapper position was awesome man. i was there for eight years we did some groundbreaking things in a short period of time man um crazy numbers mm -hmm. we played at all the historic venues the classics the legends cfe mm -hmm. i mean <laughs> i mean the birthday bashes you know about yeah, them um, yeah. everything you know what band did everything but just like anything man when you evolve, um, I evolved so much as a rapper and as an artist and as a figure in this area. Um, I didn't want, I didn't, I felt like I was competing with some of the other people in the band, like, uh, like, you know, with, with, with rapper or Michelle, I yeah. felt like we were kind of clashing a little bit. So when it was time to talk about it, we couldn't have a good conversation about it. So I just felt like it was best that, you know, we just leave it, you know, where it was, you know, we had a good run. Um, they continued on after I left. Yeah. And I left and started this <laughs> this thing called the free agent thing. Yeah. <laughs> where, uh, I was going around playing with all the bands and, and I was asking the fans who they wanted to see me with. Yeah. And uh, they narrowed it down to three bands, which was Junkyard, Backyard, and Rare Essence. And um, a good top uh, three right there. <laughs> that, I mean, yeah. that's, that's a blessing, you know. Yeah. So, and it's a, I mean, when you think about it, JS, 
it's a blessing for those bands to even open their doors to of me. Of course. Of because, course. Uh, you know, Junkyard had a rapper. Of course, Backyard has a legendary rapper. Yeah. And uh, Rare Essence was transitioning. Donnell Floyd had just left. Mm -hmm. 32 had left. So they had an open spot for rapper. Yeah. But, you know, that's just how it felt, man. So I performed with all three of those bands uh, over about a week span. Caused a big ruckus right up in the newspaper. Yeah. Uh, social media went crazy. Um, it, it was a good look for the culture, but it was time to make a decision. So when it was yeah. time to make my decision, um, Junkyard already had a rapper, and we were friends. So mm -hmm. I couldn't, I couldn't really look. I couldn't. It, it just would be hard for, for for me to keep that relationship. Yeah, knowing yeah, I that get uh, it. that I took somebody's position or that I came <laughs> in and kind of kind of bump somebody I, I don't that ain't my style so right um with backyard they fully loaded they was fully loaded bro backyard has yeah. two of everything they have <laughs> yeah. two keyboard players they got yeah. they got a whole nother band if they want you know yep. what i'm saying they have so many Fact. members so i just looked at rare essence as um it was going to be the hardest for me to do to it was going to be hard work harder work for me out of the three bands mm -hmm. because i didn't have any ties with them initially Right. But I grew up on Rare Essence just like everybody else. I knew the classic songs. Yeah, I sat yeah. back and thought with my team. I thought about what I could do to, to bring the youth there and to bring in some lyricism and some energy that they was missing. And um, 2012, about February, I went on the radio and made the announcement. Of, and uh, since then, I've been there. I've been Rare Essence, man. And we've been pedal to the floor. I love that, man. Now, what I want to do, I want to talk about our uncle, Uncle okay. Snoop. Talk about yeah. Uncle Snoop. Yeah, talk, talk, just talk about Uncle Snoop. Uncle Snoop, man. Let me <laughs> tell y'all about Uncle Snoop, man. Yeah. Like, I know JS can attest to this. Yeah. But <clears throat> being from this area, man, a lot of, it's hard for a lot of artists to get love. We got Scarface. Yeah. You got Ice Cube. You got yeah. Devin. Mm -hmm. You got some guys that really get some love. But Snoop. Yeah. Snoop <laughs> has created like this Michael Jordan kind of image like yeah. his whole image and persona is like legendary so yeah. and he's a he's a solid dude mm -hmm. so we, we we on we on social media and um i'm on my gram and everybody hitting me and hitting me and hitting me and hitting me, and hitting me. they're like now you see snoop snoop listening to rare essence riding through the streets mm -hmm. of la yeah i was like what <laughs> go look on the page snoop is party in the essence so I mean, that's how it all kind of cultivated for us to link up with Snoop. But Snoop, man, is um, he's just a, a stand up dude, man. He 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 really knows how to reinvent himself and, and keep himself going. Yeah, and um, definitely. I want to say, man, he's got to be mentioned in the greatest, one of the greatest of all time. Got to. If you just really sit back, still not just catalog, consistent. right? Yeah, right. Not just catalog because his catalog is stupid too. But just what he's doing, like how yeah. he's constantly moving everything. and has his hands in everything. Mm -hmm. you it's know all what about saying? growth and evolution man dog it's, it's crazy dog so where can they pick up you know the new single featuring snoop dog that the new single from rare s is called uh hit the floor um it should be out probably in about two weeks it's going to be available on all uh you know all platforms we got the video snoop is actually in the video with us yeah, yeah. he actually did the video here in the city mm -hmm. um hung out with us all day uh, kicked it with us, crack jokes. Um, so that'll be out probably in about two weeks. Okay. Uh, please look out for that. Um, yeah. Also, Rare Essence has a live stream that we're doing for the video release on September 19th. You got to go on the Stage It app for that. Go on Stage It, type in Rare Essence, and it'll take you from there. After we do a live performance for y'all for about an hour, a little over an hour, we're going to go straight to the video from there. Yeah, go do that. Go cop that. Do all that. For sure. Yeah, man. So what I want to know is where did you get the name Killer Cow? Man, well, my name is Calvin, so everybody call me Cal. So, um, just when I started rapping, my cousins just used to be like, "Dog, you so quiet, but when you get on the mic, you be killing, you be killing it, man. You just be killing it. You so cool, but then when you like you flip a switch. That's why my Instagram name is the Kill Switch, cause it's like you flip a switch. And I was like, yeah. He was like, man, I'm gonna start calling you Killer Cal. I was like, for real? He was like, yeah. I was like, all right. I mean, we'll see how it go. So, yeah. Now, where did the animal come from? Oh man, so with the animal, it's the same kind of concept. He's <laughs> like, dog, you're an animal on the mic. Yeah. Everything revolves around the performance. So he just was like, oh, you're an animal on the mic. Man, kill a cow, the animal. I was like, yeah. I, I kind of like that. I like yeah. how that works. You know? Yeah, I like and that. And then with the web band, we had a song called I'm an Animal. And, and you know, that, that, mm -hmm. that turned into a thing for a while. So, yeah, it just made yeah. sense. 
Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Now, growing up, man, did you have any, like, heroes, anybody that you looked up to, whether that was, you know, in the neighborhood, what was it, family, people on TV, radio, definitely. anybody? Definitely. Well, um, I was moving around a lot, man, growing up. My dad and my mom, I'm, I'm not, I'm, 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 I I'm. like to keep everything real. I know you know that about me, yeah, but for people yeah. that are watching, I don't really, like, pull no punches. My, um, my mom and dad were on drugs most of my life. Yeah. They were um they were great parents, but they just weren't there. Oh, let me decline that. They were my bad. They yeah, were great got... parents, but they just weren't able to be there. They were going through some things, um, yeah. you know, in the street. So I looked up to my grandmother mm. and as I got older because it's hard to take on someone else's burden. Yeah. That's, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. You're taking on someone else's burden and you gotta raise a a, 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 a young man yeah you got to raise that young man to be a man and being a female you're taking yeah. on this burden and i know it's not a burden it's all family but at the end of the day yeah it's a you, lot though you coming in you coming into somebody else's situation with yeah. baggage you know what i'm saying yeah so uh, as i got older i really looked at my grandmother and my aunt as my heroes mm -hmm. but coming up man just look i mean watching tv I mean, just just my. I mean, musically, my musical heroes are people like Ice Cube and, yeah. and Tupac and, and yeah. Biggie. All those people influenced me, and uh, you know, I, I would I would have to include I would I, I would have to include them in my musical ones. But just my personal, my grandmother is just awesome, man. Shout out to my mom and dad as well that they got their act together. You know, they got cleaned up a little later in life, but just coming up, trying to figure it out was just a little rough. It's of course not. Trust me, I get it, man. Now, how would you define your style? Like, whether that's you as a person, you as the artist, like, how would you define your style? Real question, bro. Um, people call me Mr. Versatile, so. <laughs> yeah, not in the box. I think, right. I think, look, I think I just, I like a little bit of everything, man. Like, I could be chilling right now and turn on some Erykah Badu. Mm. I could go sit in the car and turn on some Tupac. Yeah. I can, I can be in a grocery store and in my headphones, I could have Drake playing. Yep. I could have some gospel going. I'm, I just <laughs> listen to everything, bro. Yeah. Like Musically, I know, and I know you can attest. Of but, course. By being such a dope producer, you listen to a little bit of everything. Got to, and, um, and But as an artist, and I don't know if you can attest to this, but it kind of is hard because when it's time to create, all that stuff comes out. Yeah, And that's when yeah. you come in as a, as a great producer because... Mm -hmm. You can channel that into something positive. Exactly. That's exactly. why anytime I work with a producer, I tell them, "Hey, look, I know, I, I know you may think I have a name or, or ego, but produce me, sir. Like, yeah, yeah, produce me. Like, tell yeah. me what you want." And you were all you were great at that. I know you. I know you're trying to stay out of this, but you were, <laughs> that that's something that I really enjoy working with you, man. And, um, yeah. You know how to produce, man. And producing ain't just pushing buttons and it's all not, that. It's, it's, a, I mean, it's an art yeah, to it. It's a science. It's, it's, it's so you, much more it's so to it. so many mental games that you got to yes. like, man, it's, it's a lot. It, exactly, a lot. bro. So <laughs> so being versatile, man, Um, it has, its, it has its positives and negatives, but I wouldn't trade it for the world. So my thing is I just, I want to do a little bit of everything. I want to touch on... um. On, on the on the on the females i want to touch on politics i want to touch on bars All i want to touch on the climate of what's going on in the, in the in the city or in the world everything all goes into my style so i would say i'm i'm i, I would rather be known as mr versatile when it comes down to that i really don't have a certain style but definitely you're going to hear my delivery you're going to hear my voice um that's going to stand out and the bars is definitely going to be there no matter what i'm going i'm going to get some bars in so uh you know, I'm just just the people's rapper, man. I love that, man. Now, what what are some of your favorite Go Go songs? Whether that you know you're on it or just other people's songs or your favorite bands, just just name drop some. Man, let's see. Some, so I'm gonna uh, let me give you some. So Northeast Groovers. My favorite song from them is "Fight." I like that song. They they kind of go yeah they go crazy on that. Um, backyard. My favorite Backyard song would be, um, Dope Jam. Uh, Junkyard, my favorite song would be Rough It Off. Rare Essence, my favorite song would be It's Between Lock It and Hey Buddy Buddy. But I'm I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Hey Buddy Buddy. Um uh, and if my favorite go-go song that I'm on would probably be maybe Turn It Up or You Can't Run From the Crank. I think you can't run from the crank. Would yeah. be would be my yeah. favorite joint. Okay. 
Now, what was it like when you first, the very, very first time you heard your voice on the radio? Dang. Um, it was that that cliche pull over, <laughs> yeah, bam out. You yeah. know, that's like yeah. that cliche, oh, let me pull oh, and you yeah. just sit there like <laughs> you know, like and, and with me, my journey, you know, just dealing with, with all the ups and downs of life, you know, I probably even got emotional hearing it because it yeah. just was like dog, like I've all that hard work you put in. You doing the right thing. This as well, right? It, you get a lot of doors slammed in your face, bro. When you're doing music, man. man, it's a it's a lot of letdowns. It's like that girlfriend that that just keep dumping you. And you just yeah, keep going back yeah. and going back. But it seems so, like it's um, even more intense. Like ah, exactly. And, yeah. the, and the more you do this, bro, and the higher level you get, it don't change. Just nah, it don't. The, the doors the, the doors are bigger and they slam harder, exactly. bro. Yep, just that's different. It. Different. <laughs> yeah, that's it's just it, different. Bro. But you know how to deal with it because you're experienced. So, of course. But yeah, just just hearing myself on the radio was just awesome, man. And I think, um, to be honest, go go wise, I want to say DJ Flex, um, played my band from college on the radio wow. when we first got home. Okay. So shout out, shout out to Flex. Man. Yeah, shout out to Flex, man. That's crazy. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> now, what we was just talking about rejection, man. How much? Like, we deal with a lot of rejection, probably m way more than the average person in their whole life. You know what I'm saying? So. How do you deal with the rejection? Well, I, I did every, I did, I've done everything. I've done everything that people do when, when you get rejected. When you get rejected from home, I never just wanted to be a go-go rapper. So when people wasn't listening to my rap music, I felt rejected. So I went to Atlanta. When I went to Atlanta, you coming into a whole pool of a million rappers that have the whole city behind them. So then you go to Texas. When you go to Texas, it's the same thing. I've moved around. You go to New York, it's the same thing. So you just like, bro, around, with rejection, you just got to kind of just see. You got to find your niche and you got to attack it. You got to stick with it. Stick with, Stay with your goals. Keep attacking, attacking, attacking because all those artists uh, have, been, have got rejection as well. Like I'm sure Jay-Z has been rejected. Uh, whoever your favorite artists are, or your favorite producers, they've all been rejected, but the one thing, they never stopped. So that uh, that's the main thing with rejection with me. I, I take rejection and I just I, I keep climbing. I climb that hurdle and just and just keep going. Yeah. Now before a show, do you ever get nervous? And like, how do you deal with that if you do? That's a great question. What's funny is, I actually do. Um, I always get nervous right before it's time to perform because uh, it's a lot of stuff. Like I got my, I gotta remember my stuff. I gotta remember the classic RE material that's not my stuff. I gotta remember, um, I gotta direct the band on certain songs. I gotta interact with the crowd. Um, I do a lot of freestyle at the show, so I gotta stay on topic of the song. I have to keep the, I have to speak clearly. That's a big pet peeve of mine on the mic. I can't be mumbling. I have to speak clearly. Every bar has to hit. You know what I'm saying? So I, I'm one of those guys. So I get nervous because of stuff like that. So basically, I'm just being hard on myself, to be honest with you. That's that's basically where it comes from. But I, yeah, I get nervous, man. But once once I hit the stage and see those faces mm -hmm. and I sit back and I look over the crowd and I'm like, dang, man, these people paid their money. Yeah. They could have been anywhere. They two hours. They in here with me. They in here with the band and they just watching us and we got to entertain them. So it's all worth it. Yeah, man. Now, have you ever had a moment where like you froze up? Man. Whether that was like, you know, in the past, like when you was just getting started or anything. I want to say, yeah. Um, I had just joined Rare Essence um, in January. I had a conversation with Coop from Backyard when he was managing Backyard. And Coop was like, well, Cal, Rare Essence got you now. So they got energy and they got more, they got their energy back and they got the youth now and, and, and they got a wave coming. We want to battle y'all. So... <laughs> Backyard and Rare Essence had a battle, Armageddon, mm. uh, at the LaFontaine Blue in February, at March, February mm. or March. Mind you, I've just been in the band for like a month and a half. Yeah. And I got to come in here and go up against the uh, the bad boys. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> yeah. the first, like the first couple cues, I was like, you know, I was... But then as I got into it, so it, it wasn't, a, it's not major slips. It's just little things that we yeah, would know and that course. you, that you in the right, right. Yeah. Just like when you, just like when you in the, in, 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 this, in, in the lab and, and you might do something like you so smooth, like 
Yeah. Nobody's gonna really know that you didn't, you wasn't recording. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, uh huh. But not if like, you hey, know. Let me hear that again. You know what I'm uh-huh. saying? Like, yeah, and that's you, happened plenty of times. Right. You know how yeah. to transition, so you just gotta know how to transition with it, bro. Yeah, man. Now I know you've performed all over the world, man. What What are your, some of your most memorable performances? Man, I want to say Bermuda was dope. Um, Dominican Republic was dope. Uh, Jamaica was dope. I haven't been to Toronto, man, to perform, but that's definitely on my list. In the States, though, please, I hope so. In the States, though, I want to say the biggest, one of my most standout performances was being the first go-go band to play South by Southwest in Austin. Um, Austin, Texas is dope, man. Like anybody that anybody that's watching that hasn't experienced South by Southwest, open-minded crowd. Everybody is there to see what's what music is going on. Everybody's receptive to what you're doing. It's love. It's love for like over four or five days of just music, networking, film, production, artistry, everything. It's all there. Rappers. It, it's just live, man. And the way they run it, and you know, you got your ID cards, and you're not just you're not just free running around free. You kind of is on you. You on like a, a schedule. And I like how they, it's, it's ran very well, man. It's very organized. So I would say South by Southwest in the States was pretty dope for me. Both times, because the second time we performed with Wale um, as a surprise to the crowd. And that was at, that was at Austin Live. Um, and that was crazy. And that was crazy. Nice. Now, how do you maintain a positive attitude and that motivational attitude, you know, on days where, like, you don't feel like it, you know, especially during times like this, you know, it's like a lot going on every single right. day or something like, so how do you maintain your motivation to keep going? Well, good question, man. I would say just, that's just my personality anyway. So that's not really hard for me, yeah. but just, just to try to remember that it could always be worse, you know, and to look Facts. at where we, Facts. look at where, look at where we came from and how far, how far I've came. I could have easily went left yep. a few years ago and made some bad decisions to put me in a spot where I wouldn't yeah. be here. Yeah, you know, so every day, we, I, you know, you see the news like we see the news. Yeah, the man. city is going crazy right now. I don't know how many times I just spoke to families and, and sent my condolences and talked to the youth and man. pulled up in neighborhoods. I mean, it's just it's it's so wild right now, and the, and the climate of the culture, politics, yeah. the pandemic, the president, yes. the po- the police. <laughs> It's something Social every media, day, man. <laughs> gun block, like I can just keep going and going. So all that stuff just weighs on people, man. And yeah, and I just, I just try to keep it positive. Anytime somebody talk to me or anytime we speak, it's always gonna be positive for me. Yeah, man. Yeah. Now, when you just mentioned, you know, some of the stuff going on in DC, um, I've noticed, of course, you know, the violence. You know, it's always been going on. It's been going on since before I was born. Right. When I was growing up happening now and unfortunately it might continue to keep happening but do you have like a solution or anything that could prevent it well there's a lot of things bro um i do a lot of work in the city with the kids and what i noticed the difference is from when we were growing up i'm a little older than you of course but from from from, from when we were growing up it's it was more to do. It was more things to do. It was rec centers. It was summer jobs. It was it was go go bands. It was way more go go bands. Yeah. So that that takes your time away. When when kids don't have anything to do, they find something to do. You yeah. feel me? Like they're going to find something to do, whether it's on the good side of things or the bad side. Yeah. You know. So I don't know, man. I I, I just I, I I just pray for the youth. The gun violence in the city, man, is just out of hand. It's, yeah. it's, it's too many illegal guns in our city and too yeah. many kids with guns. It's just, it's overwhelming. Like it's the easier numbers to get a gun stacking. than it is to get a scholarship, unfortunately. Absolutely. Man. Yeah. Absolutely, bro. And I mean, you just got to be careful. I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to just, I don't want to just blame it on gentrification, but nah. again, you pushing people out of their neighborhoods. Yeah. They're uncomfortable. You know what I'm saying, like, and in the and on the end, and I'm and I'm a realist. Yeah. We got to take responsibility for our actions as well. Of course, some of this stuff is senseless. A lot yeah. of this stuff is senseless. Yeah. Yeah. So our black youth, we got to take accountability for that, man. Like, you out here making bad decisions, man. You taking lives, you robbing. Yeah, this innocent people it. too. Like, yeah, that ain't, that ain't cool. And then kids, like Come babies, on, like 
Nah. Kids, I mean, anybody that's been in the street knows the the rule is the rule, man. Yeah. I don't care if you go back to your mafia days, your mafia mm -hmm. movies, yeah. your Scarface, your Goodfellas. Yeah. I don't care what level of street dudes you are. No kids, no women, dog. Right, yeah. Period. Yeah. Period. It's, it's getting out of hand, man. It's getting out of hand. So, I mean, condolences to everybody we lost. And it's a yeah. double-edged sword because we're losing people to the to the virus. Yeah, 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 man. So, it's bad, man. Yeah, I, I want to switch gears for a minute. Uh, yeah. This might be random, but I'm a, I'm a curious person, man. What are you listening okay. to right now? What am it I could, listening to right yeah, now? Yeah, it could be old, new, whatever. Good question. Um, believe it or not, I'm listening to Griselda right now. Ooh, all right. Yeah, all right. I'm listening. I'm listening to Conway right now. Yeah, I'm feeling Conway right now. I'm, yeah. I mean, the whole movement is is been off, off the. They yeah. just took over the game, you know yeah. what I'm saying? But uh -huh. they just doing I'm, them, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling, I'm feeling what they doing right now. Um, also, what else I'm listening to? Um, so I was listening to some Mint Condition earlier. Ooh, can't go wrong and, with that. And, and some, and some Tony, Tony, Tony. So, mm, yeah, you know, I just, I just been, you know, it's been raining, so I've been slowing it down a little bit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nah, I ain't mad at you, man. Yeah. I ain't mad at you. Definitely. Now, everybody has their own definition of success and what it means to them. But what is your definition of success? Man, my dad, that's a great, man, you, you, you killing it, bro. <laughs> um, I'm going to tell you why you're killing it and I'm going to get into my answer because a lot All of people, right. um, as an independent artist, right? Yeah. A lot of people see independent artists of my stature and they say, well, Kyle, man, why you why you not signed to... So this, 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 mm -hmm. or yeah. why, why you don't just move away and mm -hmm. go do this, or why you didn't, bruh? I know who I am. I know yeah. who I want to be. Mm -hmm. I know what my goals are. If I accomplish those goals, I'm successful in yeah. my eyes. Yep. I don't know what success looks like in your eyes for me, right? But I know what success looks like in my eyes for me. Yeah. So um, I mean. Success to me is just being able to just conquer your goals, man, and just keep rising, keep climbing the ladder, and uh, keep keep reinventing yourself, man. Uh, yeah. That that's that's success to me. Yeah. Um, as an independent artist, of course, we would love to get those deals, and but but it, that's not the climate right now. Yeah, it's different. You know, si signing signing deals ain't when you put in this kind of work. Nah. I mean. Is you gonna take the hundred thousand dollar advance and then hopefully you make a hundred thousand and then you start getting your money? Like right, and then the, the label got to get track. Nah. Yeah, the, like come on, bro. I mean, it's not worth it not, at the end of the it's, day. It's, it's not. It's not worth it in my situation. If it's a young kid out there that can get his family out and that can do some things with that, and and he's very confident that he can make that money back for the label and get out of the you know get out of the red. Yeah, go for it. But yeah. Independent is working very well for me yeah. right now. So yeah, man, that's I love that. Yeah, so that's success to me, bro. I love that, man. Now, how do you balance your business life and your personal life? Because I know sometimes those worlds can blend together. But how do you balance Ooh. it? Man, it's rough. Um, with my lady being in the um, she she's a singer as well, and she's in the industry, so that always helps. Um, that that I don't even know. I don't know what I would be doing. Like I don't know how I would be. With just a female, you know, some females yeah. just don't know the industry. Man, trust <clears throat> me, I know. Like, yeah. So I mean, and we can't help who we love, right? So <laughs> yeah. I mean, I got lucky, and, and 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 my lady knows the industry, so she knows the ins and outs. She knows what goes into it. She knows I could be at JS's house, just talking, like not even recording. We could just be talking yeah. about music yeah. till four or five in the morning. Yep, yep. That can mm -hmm. happen, like yeah. tonight. Like uh -huh. yeah. we can meet and we can end up talking and we'd be like, all right, bro, we straight and we look at the watch. It's yep. five a.m. bro. Yep, crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's just how it goes. So yeah. some somebody that's not familiar with the culture or familiar with the industry would look at that as a as a flag. Exactly. Look at it you super what strange. Saying? Like what is, what are you <laughs> <Exactly>. doing? <laughs> yeah. So I mean, so that's been a blessing for me. So I'm I guess I'm lucky on that end. But everything is balanced to me, man. Everything is balanced. Um, if you look at my whole model and how I do things, it's balanced. I got to balance go-go and rap. I got to yeah. balance um, my nine-to-five with uh, entertainment. Yeah. I got to balance personal time with my with father time and family time. Yeah. Like Everything is balanced to me, and I take that very seriously, and I think that's been a good part of my success is that I've learned to do good with time management and balance. 
Nice. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. Now, hypothetically, if you had to stop doing music today, what other career do you think that you would want to pursue? Great question. Um, if I had to stop performing music, could I still do anything with music? Nothing with oh, music. Nothing, nothing with music. Damn, nothing. I would be. Oh, I would be hurt. <laughs> well, after I after I get out of my depression, I would uh, <laughs> I would probably um work with the youth. I would probably mm. work with and try to mentor youth. Yeah, and, yeah. And uh, you know, just try to be uh. Just try to be there for them because they need more people. They need more visuals. They need more people to talk to them. Yeah, especially that, that people that biased. look like us. Yeah. Right, right, yeah. right. So that's what I, I will work with the youth, man, and just try to push the youth movement and get them on point. So, uh, you know, because they, they in a tough spot right now. Yeah, man. I love that. Now, what is your why? Like, why do you do what you do? What is your why? Man, my why is just... My my musical why is I just feel like I'm just getting better, man. I'm just getting better. I'm just getting it, it, like it's it's not slowing down. Like when you do something and, and like we've all done things and we've seen results, right? So we like like you you like me. You do something and you'll look at and you'll test the market and you'll say, okay, that ain't that wasn't it. Let me let me go here. And then when you go there and you see the results, you're like, that's where I need to be at. So the why for me is just um, just because, man, it just feels good, man. If it feels good, I'm rocking. I'm rocking with it. You know, that that's I'm, I'm pedal to the floor with it. And there's so much work and effort and time has been put into this. It's, that's my why, man. My why is just because it's, it, it, it needs to keep pushing, you know. Got to keep going, bro. Now, what advice do you have for aspiring creatives, you know, in the climate that we're in right now? Like, what advice would you give to them, whether it's, you know, music, whether it's dance, whether it's whatever, acting, whatever. Like, what advice would you have to those people? So, my advice would be um, something I learned. Just kind of speak things into existence. Um, a lot of people take that for granted, JS. Like, a lot of my success has come from me speaking it into existence and like I, I tell the youth and i might tell my son and anybody that's watching the more you speak things into existence you actually start moving towards that you know what i'm saying so it does it's not gonna work overnight and it, and it might not work in every situation but at least 90 percent of my successes have come from me speaking those into existence and just moving to that existence that's why when you're a kid they tell you to put things on your wall like little like pictures and stuff that you want to do like what you want to be you want to do that put that up because you start moving towards that stuff man I'm, i really believe in that so my, my advice would be figure out some things you want to do and, and start moving towards them and speaking into existence and even if the, for the first one or two things don't feel right just keep going and, and, and keep keep plugging away set some goals you know if you're doing music Build a following, man. Like build a following, build build an audience. Once you build an audience and and and, and be authentic, then you on the right you on the right path. Nice, nice. I love that. I, I want to switch gears for a minute. I want you, if you can remember, I want you to talk about the first time that you met Tony Reds. Man, um, the first time I met Tony Reds, um, I was I was I was in high school. And I went to an outside event, and he was playing with Opie Tribe. Yeah. And he just had energy, bro. Like, <laughs> yeah, bro. Like yeah. I'm talking about, like he just, he just, he was playing the bell. He was rapping. He was moving around. He was dancing. He knew everybody. Yeah. He was popular. Yeah. Fly. Yeah. Fly dude. Cool yeah. dude. Yeah. Um, down to earth. You know, <laughs> no, no crazy ego stuff. Like. Bro, that was my first time meeting him, you know, and God bless him, man, and, and rest, 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 rest well, brother. Yeah. But he never, ever changed. It nah. never changed. Same dude. It was the same, bro. <laughs> yeah. Energy. Yeah. Showing love. Yeah. Um, just, uh, just being, always moving around. Another versatile guy. He could do yeah. everything. He, he rapped with me in the booth at your at your studio. Yeah. About two, three months later, he jumped on the drums with Junkyard. I never yep. saw nothing yeah. like that before. <laughs> yeah. Like, bruh, he does he knows how to work the radio. You know, radio ain't just on the mic, bruh. Nah, like, it's you a gotta lot to know it. how to work the board, man. Yep. Like yep. come on. 
Like then he'll man he'll go leave and and be at an open mic. Yep. He'll go do a football like then be at a school and this. Come you on, know. bro. Come on, bro. Like, whew, I don't it, know. Man, that's 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 that, to lose to lose him is, is, is was tough, man. Yeah, but man, uh, still, yeah, that, that's my brother, man. Yeah, yeah, still dealing with it. But you know what I'm saying? We're going to keep his legacy alive. Definitely. That's going to be the motivation right there. Exactly, man. Long live Tony Rez. Long live, bro. Yeah, man. How important are relationships to you? Whether that's relationships with the community, relationships with your family, relationship with God, relationship with music. How important are relationships to you? Man, it's all important. To me, relationships are everything. Because um, what I learned, and you know, I don't know if you went to school, <clears throat> Did you go to college? <laughs> Howard. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nah, nah bro. You know, it's all love. Yeah, bro. of um, course. Of course. We ain't even going to go into um, all that. But straight up, though, by going to Howard, any school, any situation, I don't care what level of school, it could be high school, any schooling, yeah. what you learn is you network. Yeah. Yeah. When you meet, I know when you first met somebody from out of state, you learn their culture. You learn yep. how they move. They learn mm -hmm. you. You built that relationship. I'm pretty sure you can go on your phone right now and call somebody from college, bro. Yep, yep. And it's love. like Always. that Y'all cannot speak for five or ten years, but you can say, hey, hey, bro, what's up? I'm just checking on you. Yep. And y'all right back on track. Yeah. So that's how I live my life, man. I don't burn bridges. I keep relationships always professional. Um, I, I just try to be authentic. I, I try to be real never know you know no fa the fake stuff don't i'm I'm not good at being fake nah. it's just me I'm, I'm just not good at it some people are and it works for them but just being me and being authentic kind of got me i'm all right you yeah. know, I'm, I'm, I'm i'm good so networks i mean um networking and, and relationships mean more than anything to me man and like that's very high on my list i, I really i really if, if we got a relationship i honor that and i try to i try to hold my end of the bargain up you know what i'm saying yeah man i love that now, hypothetically, man, if you were 17 right now in 2020, how do you think you would be navigating everything that's going on? Do you think that you would still be trying to pursue music? Do you think that you would be trying to help out with the fam? Do you think you would be doing more things in the community? Like, what do you think you would be doing? Good question. So me at 17, I would definitely be music based. Um, and I would be attacking social media, like beyond levels. I would be at everybody's functions. I, I would just be a social media. Just I would just be going crazy on social just because you can do so much more than we could do marketing wise and just building your audience and and building a brand. You know, that's that's the perfect age to start getting that stuff in order, because, you know, a lot of people say don't they don't have a plan B. You know, a lot of even if anything happens you still have that network that you built as you were coming up. They might follow you to another, to something else you're doing and support you over there. You know, it's just building that audience and building your brand at 17. That's what I would focus on. That would be my focus. No matter if it was music or if it was politics, if it was community based, anything, I would want to build a brand and have people follow me and trust my brand. And that'll take, that'll last forever. Nice. Yeah, man. Now, what is something recently, I would say maybe like in the past three to six months that you figured out that you wish that your younger self would have known? I would have figured out um, since the pandemic, I have studio equipment at my house now. Mm -hmm. So I would have figured out a long time ago that I probably need to learn how to use yeah. Logic or yeah. Pro Come Tools. On, man. Or, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah. I know, I know, we, I know you met, you spoil us, JS. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, we so used to coming to these yeah, nice, yeah, these nice still, studios and, yeah, and you're doing nice. all the work for us and we just show up. Yeah. But then when you can't go to these studios and you can't just show up no more, yep. it gets real. You yeah, know what I'm really saying? real. Yeah. So, uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah. So, like, that, that would be my biggest thing, just being able to record at home. And like yesterday, Scooby called me like, hey, Cal, I need yeah. you on this track, blah, blah, blah. And I was able to be like, oh, OK, yeah. give me like 10 minutes. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So uh -huh. that's something over the past three to six months that I would say I've learned and, and I wish I would have been doing a while ago. Man, you, know you should have been. But it's better, better late than never. 
Absolutely. And yeah. let's be clear, as soon as outside open up, I still want to come to JS studio. Of course, long knocked. overdue. You long, long, long let's, overdue. Let's, let's be clear on that. Yeah, I, I, yeah. But, but just having be, being able to still get work done um, at home, it, it, it's been awesome, man. It's been awesome. Yeah, man. Now, who influences you right now? Like, is there anybody that you're watching, you paying attention to? Like, okay, I like I like what he's doing. I like what they're doing. Let me see. Let me see. Just musically or just how they move in period? Just period. It don't have to necessarily be music. Just just anything. Um, It's a guy that I want you to... It's a name that people that are watching in DC... If you're in DC, I want you to remember this name. He's one of my best friends from college. His name is Silas Grant. Mm. Um, Silas Grant, I've watched him grow up as teens with me and, and growing up going through college and coming home and living life. He's inspirational to me because I've seen him grow into the man that he is now and what he's doing for the community. And, and, and I really feel like, remember the name, Silas yeah. Grant. Yeah. I really feel like you're going to see his name on a poster, on a flyer for maybe mayor or, you know, just, just keep, remember that name. I, yeah. I, I've seen his struggle. He's one of us. Yeah. Um, he is under. He actually works with uh, Kenya McDuffie. Okay. Um, right now, and um, that's my guy, man. So I'm inspired by him. I've really, really, really been locked in on him and how he moves around. And he has my full support. Um, so that's one guy I've been watching. Um, on the mainstream side or on the music side, I really like two things. One person people would never think I would I would say, but the, I really like what Fifty Cent is doing. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. How he's evolved. I yeah. like how he's evolved. Yeah. And um, as of recent, uh -huh. I will say, who? I don't think I, I didn't think I would ever say this, Ooh. but if you could find the conversation that Joe Button had in response to Charlemagne, mm. what he said in that conversation was perfect. What did he say? He basically broke. He what happened was Joe Button left Spotify. Yeah. Because um of some contractual disagreements. Mm -hmm. He felt he was being lowballed. He believed in his brand. He yeah. said, I'd rather just leave. Mm -hmm. Charlemagne heard that he left and he said, you know, Joe, don't burn the bridge, blah, blah, blah. He kind of leaned on him a little bit. Yeah. I didn't, I, I saw that. I didn't, mm -hmm. That's what Charlemagne does. I, I kind of didn't, it didn't really catch me. That's, that's regular Charlemagne stuff. Yeah. But then when I heard Joe Budden's response and how he broke down that you have to know your worth, you have to believe in your brain. Yeah. Why? Why would another black man tear another black man down for making a better business decision for himself? Right. Like things like that. I was like, wow. Like Joe Button just grew up. Like, yeah. Uh -huh. And I plus, ownership is key. Ownership Ex is key. He was like, dog. He was like, dog. I'm footing the bill for this stuff. Yeah. I'm paying for everything. Mm -hmm. so and I'm somebody that's for, somebody that's not doing that would never understand. It's going. It's, it's almost like you're speaking a different language that they and, wouldn't. And, it wouldn't Bruh, get it perfect that is exactly it and that's why it resonated with me because it's like Charlemagne is a is a he's a a godly figure in entertainment of course yeah. but you still work for iheart radio bro yep, like yeah the breakfast club is owned by iheart mm -hmm. like joe button's podcast is all joe button yep. his money his cameras his microphones mm -hmm. his everything revolves around him and that yep. was that was strategically done on purpose by him of course so don't knock that man down man he left nah. spotify he didn't like the deal he got out of there yeah he gonna, you know he gonna find something else so I, I, that's what i've been on as of the last the past <clears throat> like week and a half i've been really watching him and, and I'm, I'm impressed by his growth man yeah yeah definitely man shout out to joe yeah, man definitely now what were some of the mistakes and challenges and failures that you had to go through you know what i'm saying throughout your journey man musically just being so pressed to get on, just giving away stuff, man. Like, I remember going to Hot Beats in Atlanta um, and um, some cash money artists being there. Shout out to Lil Twist. And I just remember, like, vibing. But they getting paid. You know what I'm saying? Like, they they getting paid to be there and they getting paid and, and we giving away vibes. You know what I'm saying? Like... We, we we give we give away a lot of stuff to try to get in the room when we don't really got to do that. Like you don't you don't have to you don't have to you don't have to to give a, give away a piece of yourself to get in the room, dog. If if it's meant for you to be in that room, you gonna get in that room. Yeah, you know that's what I'm saying. Fact. So that's that's some of the early mistakes, man. Just giving a lot of stuff away, giving a lot of game away, mm -hmm. giving a lot of vibes away. Um, what else? Uh, probably more networking. 
if I could have mm. traveled a little more, that yeah. would have helped. Yeah. Um, cause I, I'm just big on relationships. I don't, I don't, yeah, yeah. I, the more people I meet, that's another person that knows something else that I might not know. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then that could help me. So yeah. that's, that would be, that, that was some of the things I would say, just better networking and, uh, just, just being better business wise stuff that we know now. Cause we went through it. Yeah. If I could have just learned it a little earlier. Yeah. Could have got a little further. You know what I'm saying? Of course. Now, if you could go back and talk to your younger self, just have a conversation with them. Like, what would you, what would you say? And would you even say anything? What I would say is, yeah, I, I would say, don't give up. I mean, just keep going hard, bro, because it's been times where I wanted to give it up. Like, imagine this, walking, uh, okay, we play three or four times a week with the what bang. Um, the other two or three days a week, I, wanna, I went and recorded a, a mixtape. My mixtape had RG3 on it when he played for the Redskins. Um, it's called Capital Punishment. So I go do Capital Punishment. We plan all these shows. I got band practice. I got a family, got a job. I walk, I, I, I go to New York. I get into Hip Hop Weekly. Hip Hop Weekly got Biggie on the cover. I'm like, wow, I'm in a big magazine. This, this. I come home with 100 copies, blah, blah, blah. I take the copy to the go go. I walk in. I'm thinking everybody's going to be hot size. I, I'm giving out copies. People are like, oh, oh, that's all right. Well, it's my man's birthday. And, uh, I'm from C Pleasant, and uh, and I was just like, "Bruh, like y'all, y'all ain't getting it." Like, I'm in Hip Hop Weekly. Like the dude that you see every week up here for breaking, busting his ass every week for you. I'm in Hip Hop Weekly. That's something. And they was just like, "Oh, well, oh, that's that's cool." But yeah, tonight, what what are we drinking? Uh, uh yeah, it's it's my it's my friend's birthday. I'm just like. So, <laughs> so stuff like that, man, it just, it, 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 it breaks you down, man. And you just want to quit. You know what I'm saying? You'd be like, man, this ain't, this ain't it. But again, if you got your goals in place, you got everything in place and you got a good team, yep. you got a good team. You can't mm -hmm. do it by yourself. Yep. Gotta have a you team. got a good team with you. Yep. You're good to go, bro. Yeah, man. Now I know right now somebody that's either watching or listening and they're, they're, they 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 watching your moves, man. They like, man, I want to be just like Killer Cat. I want to be like the animal. What yep. advice would you give to them? Man, first off, you can be better than me. Mm. Um, t please take anything that you see me doing and apply it to your stuff. I don't. I never understood why people say, "Oh, he, man, people, man, he taking oh, uh, what you, he he doing? He do, he trying to be me or he trying to." Nah, take what I'm doing, man, and and, and push. Like, mm -hmm. like I always tell people, what good is information if you withholding it, bro? Like, yeah, that's facts. I mean, you know what I'm saying? If you that if you confident in your product, what what you need to withhold information for? Yeah. You know, just like in the streets, if you go uptown and you get a five dollar bag of weed, mm -hmm. is that is that quality? Like, <laughs> is it is it, is it a gimmick behind yeah, it? You don't uh, need gimmicks, like. Right. If you buy a five dollar bag of weed, I I, I don't know. It, I don't know if that's right. <laughs> yeah. But whatever you're doing, I mean, that's yeah. just an example. Whatever you're doing, it's gimmicks, gimmicks, and all that stuff. Usually means the quality isn't there. Mm -hmm. So if you believe in your product, man, and believe in yourself, man, the sky's the limit, bro. Yeah. Now, if they did a movie on your whole life from beginning to end, who would you want to play you, and why? I would want Ice Cube to play me. Ooh. Okay. I think that would be dope. Yeah. And then get, that would be then dope. get young O'Shea to play the younger version. There you go. Yeah. I think that would that would be the vibe. Yeah. Right? Just because yeah, I can see that. I can the see influence, that. Yeah, that yeah. heavy ice cube influence, man. Yeah. Like Ice Cube is so versatile, dog. Like man. he can he touches on so many different things, movies, acting, behind the scenes. Big three, like man. Now that we talking about it, yeah, yeah. I can see how yeah. why I like him so much, dog. Uh, like, it makes sense. It makes, <laughs> it all sense. makes sense. Man. So yeah, I, I would say I would say Ice Cube. I would love for Ice Cube and Young O'Shea to knock that out, man. Man, that's perfect. <laughs> that's the perfect one right there. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. Now this may be a simple question or this may be a complicated question, but okay. who are you? Wow. I might have a complicated answer. Man. I am me. Basically saying, I can only be me, man. Like, just some things to describe me. Just honest, humble, caring, and authentic. 
you know, I, that's me. Yeah. You know? Honey. Honey. What is your biggest fear? I know a lot of, a lot of the tough guys will come in here and say, man, I ain't scared nothing. <laughs> oh, let me see. Uh, my biggest fear, man, is just a uh, great question, boy. <laughs> I, I would say my biggest fear, I just always got this biggest fear of making a bad decision mm, yeah. that could just, I just, uh, just being, just, just being us and being our people, yeah. you always one bad decision away. Man, from... tell me about it. I was just talking to somebody about that. Like it's, it's crazy, man. It's just man. Bruh, like you always want. And, and, and I, and I don't say that. And, and you know, I'm, I'm not, I, I can control myself. Obviously, I, I've, can, I've done it this long, but it's yeah, just... but it's the stuff that the, you can't control that you yes. don't... Yeah, that's the stuff that, you know, yes. can get that you off it, guard. Bro. Yeah. What you said is it. Like, it's the... It's the... It's like when you... Like, when, I, when I'm driving, you you know you can drive. Yeah. It's the other people, man. Yeah, <laughs> it's, man. It's the people. Yeah. You don't know who... You don't know if this guy in this lane is drunk. You don't know if this lady can't see or is distracted. Yeah. So, that's, that's just... So... Um, I'm scared of that, but again, when you have faith, like I have faith, yeah, I'm 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 God driven, man. I got faith, man. So, um, you know that that's just always in my mind, though. Like, man, Lord, please let me yeah. make the right decision. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because that thing can turn from from good to ugly quick, yeah, real quick. You know? Yeah. What is the impact that you want to have on the world? Um, man, honestly, JS. Man, the impact I want to have on the world is just, it's going to sound cliche, but show love, man. Like, showing love is so much easier than doing something else or doing doing the, the, the balance or, or, or doing doing the, the, the most in the worst way. Like, just show some love, man. Find a positive. Like, people tell me all the time, Cal, you something else. You're going to find a positive out of anything. Of course, it could be the worst. It could be flat tire in the rain, uh, uh, on the side of the road, and I'm gonna be like, "Well, at least nobody hit us." Yeah, or, it's all about perspective. Well, exactly. That's yep. perfect. That's 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 me, dog. So I would just say, man, like that's it for me. You know that that this gonna sound cliche, but show love, man. Yeah, that, yeah, it's that's it. Yeah, don't be a crab that's in the it. barrel, man. Just show love. <sighs> Talk to him. Yeah, man. Now, if you could pick three people, three uh -huh. people. <laughs> dead or alive to sit down okay. and have dinner with just to have a conversation with them and pick their brain who would you pick and why man you the man dog <laughs> let me see the first person i would pick is tupac mm. wow he has such a wide range of things that i would want to hear his opinion on like even what's going on right now yeah imagine yeah. if we had tupac right now like Man. With what's going on like no disrespect to any other rappers that are um active with with the communities but yeah it was just different with him like, you ain't tupac you know yeah, what i'm saying it's, yeah it's different so yeah. that's why he was so special man so i would say tupac would be one i think i would want to talk to malcolm x or just to hear like just to get a vibe from him like not even with the climate he just was a thinker anyway you know what i'm saying so um Malcolm X and who was my third? I'm a couple of them. I know I'm cheating, but I'm no, a couple good, of them. Good, my yeah. mom and dad. Ooh, okay. Just, just so, just to see if they happy with my growth. Like, yeah, yeah. They, you know, I lost, I lost both of them. They both aren't here. So, yeah. But I, I would, I would just want to say, like, you know, am I doing all right? You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, yeah, just yeah. to get that vibe from them. You know, yeah. or, or send me a sign or something. You know, yeah, so yeah. That would be my, that, that would be me, man. That, that'll cover. I'd be good all that. Yeah, nah, hey, that's a that's a solid three right there. Well, I should say four Appreciate in this situation. <laughs> nah. Definitely, yeah, definitely. nah, I love that, man. So. What's next for you, man? What does the future hold for Killer Cow the Animal? Man, the future holds, man, just um anything musically, man. Like I I've contemplated uh starting a label. Um uh being an artist, you know, I'm not gonna be an artist forever. So um I just wanna keep doing good music right now. Uh with the go go thing, we really need a push. When this pandemic is over, we're gonna really need a push. And I know that's gonna be on my responsibility as one of the youth. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not a, I'm, I'm not in my twenties by far, but you still got I, that, you, that youthful energy, right? In go go years, man, like I'm the youth. You yeah. know what I'm saying? A, yeah. a lot of go go. I, I, we grew up on a lot. You know, when I look at junkyard, 
they were they've been playing since 1980. That's when I look crazy. at backyard, they've been playing since 1989. Like right? Yeah. Backyard's been playing since 89. When I look at Rare Essence, the the band that I'm in, they've been playing since 1976. Crazy. We're celebrating our 45 year anniversary. That's I wasn't even crazy. born. That's crazy. <laughs> like, how do you play? Like, do you know what kind? Like, people don't, that are watching. If you don't know about Gogo, let me tell you how powerful Gogo is. There are people in my band that have never had jobs. Yeah. They have played Gogo for 40 years. Mm -hmm. That is rock and roll Hall of Fame numbers, bro. Yeah. There, you can go give me your give me your favorite rock and roll band, pop band. They didn't play 40 years consecutively. Nah, that longevity they didn't. is real. Yeah. Right. They didn't do it. They didn't. So one thing I wish we had the records to match the longevity. Yeah, and we'll get them. We'll get them. Yeah, you know, right. Yeah. We work that. That's the only flaw with Gogo. I would say we don't have the records to match the longevity. But bro, you talking about a genre that's homegrown that play and make money, millions of dollars over forty years. Man, Whew. we mm, just haven't had awesome. that that huge uh, national spotlight just yet. That's it. That's just it. Yet. Man. It's, it, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Yeah, it's just a matter of when. Will. It's just I a think it will, and I, and I think Gogo needs a youth movement as well. It, it yeah. needs to be some youngest right now. Yeah, that's 14, 15, 16. Yeah, that's gonna say, you know what? We're gonna take the Gogo. We're gonna take the. We're gonna take the keys, and we're gonna rock this, and we're gonna talk to the OGs. We're gonna talk to everybody and make it work. Yeah, man. Now, when it's all said and done, how do you want to be remembered? Man, as the animal. You know what I'm saying? Like, I I, I attack on the mic. I attack on stage, I attack in the booth. But all like just like just like a lion, dog. When it's when it's time to go, when it's time to go, that lion gonna go. When it when it, when everything's cool, he cool as a fan. He you, the lion don't even make noise. When he walking through, he just walking through. That's it. So that's what I, I want to be known as that, man. You know, just just a humble guy. You know, I don't do a lot of talking, but I do a lot of showing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. I love that, man. Well, hey, that's all I got, man. I appreciate you, man. man you have any last bro. words? Man, thanks for having me, bro. And, you know, while I got you here, I like to give people their flowers, man. Like, what you doing and what you've done for the culture and what you've done musically, man. I'm proud of you, bro. I've seen you come up. I know the team. I know the accolades. I know stuff people don't know. I know how hard you work. I know everything, man. I'm proud of you. Keep doing your thing. I'm always one call away. Nothing but love for you, bro. My brother, man. It's always love. Once this whole COVID situation is over with, man, we going to link back up. Long Thanks, overdue man. collaboration. Gotta, gotta get with Don Juan, too, man. Shout out yeah, to Don Juan. Yeah, shout out to Don Juan. My yeah. brother's killing it in Atlanta right now, yeah, bro. Yeah, man. I Woo! love that, man. We all doing our it. own thing, but we going to come together. We're like going to make history. Time, yeah. yeah, let's get it. Let's so thank it, you, man. man. Shout out to everybody watching. Thank you for the support. Killer Cow on all platforms. Kill Switch on IG. Killer Cow to Animal Facebook. www.killercowtoanimal.com. I did 20 some features over the pandemic. They all gonna be dropping soon. Um, I got something nice coming up with King Los. Mm. I got something nice coming up with Snoop with Rare Essence. That's yes. coming up in two weeks. Yes. That's you know that we 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 moving man. So if you need me, I'm here. Shout out to JS. Yes, man. Once again, I want to thank my guest, Killer Cow. And until next time, it's a 24-7 lifestyle. We don't make moves. We make movements.